Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to Tooth and Scrubs Gaming. Thank you so much for joining me today in Meeple Station, and we have finished collecting our 100 kilograms of element 115. If you remember from the previous episode, we jumped in the Sinifu, into the Sinifu system and found a massive temple floating around one of the planets nearby, and our research wing, science wing, believes it to be some sort of communication device that is powered by this mysterious element 115. So, Feather is saying, we have accumulated the 100 kilograms of element 115 we require to fuel the communications device at the temple captain. Excellent. Get Mr. Science for me, please. Yes, Captain, we have gathered the element 115 then. Yes, we have, Mr. Science. How do you recommend we proceed? The science wing would like you to choose just one of our scientists to take the element 115 over and fuel the machine. Though it is miraculously stable, it is still radioactive, Captain. We're using a shielded container to carry the 115, and the spacesuits already have some shielding against cosmic rays. Mr. Science, is there something we should worry about? Well, sir, how do I put this? The device is powered through a process that is unknown to us, using an exotic super heavy element that we've never encountered before to fuel it. All right, I follow. This is super dangerous and stupid. Well, sure. But honestly, the whole venture has been dangerous and stupid, Captain. We found an ancient light speed device in an 8,000 year old shipwreck and used it to jump across untold light years. We've managed our first contact with and been attacked by and ourselves have attacked nasty violent aliens and that we turned out to kind of be related to. And now we're inside an uncharted nebula around a star we first heard of last week about to play atomic roulette with a weird flying space temple whose instructions are written in a language we almost kind of understand. That just makes this sound more stupid, Mr. Science. We all knew what we were signing up for when we left Savin, Captain. Nearly everything we've done on this voyage has been a first for any Savin ever. Nothing venture, nothing gain, sir. It's all worked out so far. Every member of the science wing would be one of, uh, would be the one to go in a heartbeat. You're right, of course. We all knew what we were signing up for. Indeed, Captain. Once you've made your choice, assign a pilot and one scientist to a ship and load the 100 kilograms of element 115 into the cargo hold. Everyone in the science wing knows what to do once there. We made sure of that. All right, Mr. Science, I'll put in the order. Thank you for your candor. Of course, Captain. All right, so let's go ahead and get Toothbud and Trout off the ship. Got all the resources off. Load up um, 100 units. Oops, I keep doing the same thing. There we go, 100 units of element 115. Where did the station go? All right, who should we send? Who should we send to power up the device in the temple floating around the unknown planet? Well, I'm thinking we're gonna send, let's see who has the lower science of the two. Halibut has 30, Mr. Science has 19. So Mr. Science, thank you for volunteering to go with Marimba to power up that station. All right, so we have sent that we will about we are about to send a ship with 100 units of element 115 to Sinifu A-B. So hopefully this goes well for us. Let's go ahead and get Toothbud assigned to a bedroom here and then we need to find Trout a bedroom to be assigned to. Those are all occupado. Uh for whatever reason I can't highlight that bed. We're going to deny sideburns. And okay, here we go. And Trout, we found you a bedroom as well. So that is good. Let's hop back down to the Albatross and Mr. Science. The goods are all in there. So let's go ahead and send them to, I'm assuming, scout that planet again. And away they go. So while that is shipping away, let's go ahead and look at the trade menu over here. Anything we, they'll take, ooh, let's sell them 100 thorium. Okay. Um, We'll just go ahead and sell them 10 at a time. Looks like we're draining quite a bit of their money. And we'll buy off those diamonds because I do like to have the diamonds. We'll buy their fish and lavish meals. And then let's sell them some fruit here. Yep, yep sell them some fruit. And 106 credits uh, for element 115. So we'll sell them one unit of element 115. And then let's go ahead and sell them a little bit of silicone. 
Let's see how much we can sell them. There we go. So that leaves them with one credit and we will sell them a chunk of ice to take all their money. Thank you, VAS. And now that puts us well over 100,000 credits. I don't know what we'll need it for, but it's nice to have that banked away. Uh, off screen, I started building a little bit more of the bedroom space. So let's go ahead and lay down some carpet over here. And there we go. And we'll go ahead and put a door in, uh, aluminum door. Put that door there. All right, Captain, we are at the temple. Mr. Science is about to float over to the site with the element 115. Put Mr. Science on before they go, please. This is Mr. Science. Go ahead, Captain. I just want to wish you luck, Mr. Science. Please be safe. Oh, don't worry about me, sir. Even if I load the 115 in and get instantly vaporized in some horrific and unforeseen thermonuclear explosion, frankly, this is still super awesome. I am actually ecstatic you chose me. Okay, right meat for the job then. All right, well, be careful anyways, Mr. Science. Of course, sir. All right, go on then. Uh, Mr. Science has gone extravehicular and is floating over to the temple now, sir. What Mr. Science said about the getting vaporized by thermo whatever explosion is really worry here. Is it? Is that a real worry here? No, not really, Marimba. But we do have some new insight into how hardcore Mr. Science is about science. Well, good thing he is named Mr. Science. Marimba nervously clears his throat. Ha, okay then, sir. You're going to be all right, Marimba. Run me through what's going on there. All right, sir, yes. Ah, Mr. Science is about is at the site and removing the 115 from the shield container. He's putting it into a chamber in a depression in the surface of the temple now. And oh, wow, what happened, Marimba? As soon as Mr. Science closed the chamber door, the entire structure started lighting up. It's like a glow just started creeping up through all the seams in between the stone blocks and all the writing on the surface of the temple is emanating light. Is Mr. Science all right? Seems to be, sir. Mr. Science floated over to, well, there's some kind of large lit up glyph or image of some kind now in the center of the structure's main floor that wasn't there before. Looks to exam and transmission cuts. Marimba, come in, the albatross. Dead air. There, uh, there's been an incredible power surge from the temple structure, Captain. Keep trying them. Get me someone from the science wing up here. Ah, what's happening, pilot? Ah, what the heck is that? Calm yourself. Tell us what's happening. There's some kind of giant creature floating outside the ship, knocking on my cockpit glass. It's tentacles like it's a freaking door. What do you mean, some creature? Are you in danger? Uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it doesn't seem to be acting hostile or anything, but it freaks me out. What in the... It's waving at me like a person. Describe the creature, Marimba. It's kind of like one of those squids things, but meeple eyes. But it's wearing clothes, sir. That's not right. It's wearing clothes? Yeah, like a white lab coat and glasses. Wait, does that lab coat have a name tag? Oh, no. It's freaking... This freaking thing ate Mr. Science, and it's wearing his clothes. Wait, what? Uh, it's shaking its head. What? What's happening? It took one of its tentacles, pointed at its name tag, and then pointed at itself, Captain. Is, is it Mr. Science? It's nodding its head. What in Tyler's armpit is going on right now? Sir, I got a sudden feeling about this. I'm pointing at it through the glass and then to the door, and it's nodding its head again. It's floating over to the door. Uh, I don't know about this, Marimba. Silence. I opened the airlock door and it floated right in and sat in the passenger seat, passenger seat and buckled in the harness with its tentacles. What on saving? Sir, I think the squid thing is Mr. Science. What exactly happened when our comms cut out Mr. Science uh, out after Mr. Science fueled the device? I don't know. All these weird, it was almost like bolts of yellow lightning came arcing out of the glowing glip on the temple ground straight into Mr. Science. Then there was this blinding flash of light, and I couldn't see anything for a little bit. By the time my vision came back, the squid thing was floating outside the cockpit glass looking at me. Bring it home, Marimba. We need to figure out what happened. Yes, of course, sir. Goodness, I hope Mr. Science is okay. You and me both. Commander Feather is looking at you, dumbfounded, shaking his head. Tell the science wing their translations probably need some work. Ooh, that was a lot of story right there. So it sounds like Mr. Science might be one of our squid friends. Oh, wait, no. Oh, my God. Are these squids our ancestors? Is that why they're not hostile? Talk about a plot twist if that's it. All right, so we're waiting for the albatross to roll on home with Mr. Science potentially transformed into a giant squid. 
I am excited to see a squid in a white lab coat, though. Deny that. Uh, that will be certainly interesting. Diamonds are super cheap, so we'll buy those. Buy some lavish meal, buy those fish. Uh, buy the fine meals just to have a little extra. And we'll sell off our biomass. And that is good enough for me. All right, the albatross is rolling in. Let's see what happened. Oh, there it was. Did you guys see it for just a second? They're waiting in the science lab. Let's go then. The, squ <laughs> the squiantist. Before you in the science wing sits a six foot tall purple squid creature wearing a lab coat and glasses. His six tentacle appendages protrude out of the bottom of the lab coat, empty sleeves dangling by the sides. It rubs its two front tentacles together in a thoughtful seeming manner. Mr. Science, is that you? The creature nods its head, raises a tentacle up, and waves to you enthusiastically. I don't understand. How did this happen? Mr. Science shrugs with all six of its tentacles. Does anyone here have any idea whatsoever why Mr. Science is now a giant squid? Uh, this is just about an, as unforeseen as circumstances get. Mr. Science seems to have lost the ability to speak or even have a mouth now, so it's been difficult to get first-hand account. Well, I suppose he doesn't really have hands either. All right, so problem number one, communication. Mr. Science throws a tentacle in the air excitingly and squidges down in the chair. Uh, it starts pulling open drawers and riffling wild through the contents, throwing things to and fro. What are you looking for? It looks around for something that wraps a tentacle around a test tube and mimics scribbling it against another tentacle. Writing? It drops the test tube, which promptly shatters on the floor and taps its tentacle excitedly on where its nose would be. It had one, if it had one. One of the scientists retrieves a clipboard and marker for it to use. This is incredible. This is, uh, this is a heck of a plot twist, guys. You watch as Mr. Science fumbles around frustratingly with trying to hold a marker securely in its tentacle. It sloppily scribbles something with great effort of tentacular dexterity and turns the clipboard around to show you. Written in, <laughs> in wild, messy characters is no thumbs clumsy. I can't imagine. What happened out there, Mr. Science? It turns to a fresh page, scribbles something, and shows you the results. No idea. I'm squid now. Well, yes, we can all see that part of it, Mr. Science. This seems to amuse Mr. Science. Once the amusement wears off, more scribbling. Strange, feeling things in mind. You feel things in your mind. I'm not sure we follow what things. Pictures in mind from somewhere else. You feel emotions like pictures from somewhere else. Difficult to explain. And then after a moment and a fresh page, tired, strange desire, see sun. What? You want to see the sun. Mr. Science nods its head. Okay, Mr. Science, no problem. We can resume this later. It makes a gesture that feels like it's tentacle versions of a thumbs up and promptly Octopus walks out of the room and closes the door behind. I have certainly seen everything now. Obviously, Mr. Science just became our research project. We recommend restricting further access to the temple until we have some conception of why this has happened. That is an easy argument from me. Mr. Science's personal tablet makes a ping sound and he looks down to check it. Mr. Science apparently walked out of the station and floating out in space. He's gone about 100 meters off and is just sitting there. Okay, I see we have a lot of observations to do, everyone. The entire room of scientists start nodding fervently, grumbling their ascents and scattering to their work. All right, I'll go order the research then. Well, um, that is certainly an interesting plot twist. Let's go ahead and start researching Squientist. Um, have your team work with the new resident squid to try and learn more about them. Okay, so that is a heck of a plot twist. Uh, so we powered up that temple, and now Mr. Scientist is turned into a squid, and he's getting some weird feelings, pictures, whatever you want to call it in his mind. Let's see if we can see him floating anywhere. Is that him there? There he is, Mr. Mr. Squientist, Mr. Science, floating out in the ether. It's kind of hard to see him. There he is. Um, so that's that's pretty pretty interesting. So we'll go ahead and let that research go. Why that's doing that, let's go ahead and keep working on these bedrooms up here. And we'll plop another door down right there. And go ahead and build ourselves some wall sections. Do, 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 do. And Mr. Hacksaw can come on up and start building that for us. Go ahead and plop down some heavy beds. One there, 
One there, and oh, there's Mr. Science just touring around, having a good time. And then let's go ahead and also build our plants, which I don't think we can build yet because those walls are not completed. Excuse me. And let's go ahead and drop the wardrobes down next to the bed. One there, one there. All right, Hacksaw, you got quite a bit to do. Mr. Science, why are you running away from me? Let's get a good, good look at him. Uh, he's just keep floating away. All right, Mr. Science, fine. We won't look at you and your beauty. All right, Hacksaw, getting those rooms finished for us. Fantastic. Okay, he's coming back in and out of the station. I, I'm guessing these squids, and down in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts are. I'm guessing these squids are our ancestors now? They've got to be. And their way of communicating is inflating and deflating. That's... And the little ones are maybe the kids? Big blue squid, purple squid. They've got to be our ancestors. Somehow, Mr... Uh, what was the scientist's name? Mr. Wakuyu, Wakayu changed our meeples into squids and somehow that allows us to survive in space that's that's my guess again down in the comments below let me know what you think is going to happen don't forget to like this video if you've been enjoying this campaign so far and we've certainly had our fair share of plot twists uh that have um that weren't expected at all in this game i thought this was going to be a very straightforward build a station fight some aliens win and discover our ancestors on some long last planet and have a nice little reunion. But obviously that is not the way this game is going. Uh, but I like it. So definitely if you guys haven't played it, check it out on Steam. Let's go ahead and take Pretzel. I like him. Uh, Seven Engineering. We'll get him assigned to one of these bedrooms up here. And Pretzel, you have yourself a new bedroom. Looks like Hacksaw has finished building a lot of the bedroom parts up here. So let's get a plant placed there and then some lamps in the corners of the rooms. And those bedrooms are done, so I think that leaves us with at least uh, two open bedrooms now. So we can keep expanding the number of meeples we have, and now we're up to 24 meeples. That's a, that's a pretty large station when we just started with five. Got plenty of chefs going in here and cooking. Let's, um, let's go ahead and check here. What else does Pretzel have? He's got 11 engineering, so that's good, and everything else is four and five on janitor. All right, so he will keep us engineering and help Hexall build our little station as we expand. Um, let's see how we're doing on research. 110 on that, so that's good. Uh, let's see. Let's go ahead and expand a little bit more over here, and let's grab our aluminum hall. And then one, two, three, hallway, one, two, three. Uh, we're going to, ooh, botanist and a pilot. Yeah, let's go ahead and grab him. And then bring this all the way over here and get this nice and expanded for us. All right, so let's go ahead and assign that new fellow into this bedroom. Hey, thank you so much for joining us. And he will be a botanist and help us grow some plants because we will need to make sure we have plenty of food to go around so we don't run out. Let's just check on our food situation. Plenty of simple meals, plenty of fine meals. Limited number of lavish meals. That's okay. Let's go ahead and, and trade with these guys. We'll buy their fish, buy their lavish meals. Um, I don't know if we're going to need element 115 for anything else. Um, I guess we can go ahead and sell it to them. There's no, no reason for us to keep it. If the worst thing is we need to go buy, mine more, we can go mine more. But I'll take that money for now. Let's go ahead and sell them uh, some super alloys. Um because we got quite a bit of that. And let's just go ahead and take all their money. They got 30 credits left, so we'll sell them 10 titanium more. And thank you for all your money, gentlemen. We do appreciate the trading. All right, so now we got should have the food rolling in pretty good now. We could always expand uh, our garden area. Power we're doing okay on. Might not hurt to build another thorium reactor here soon. Maybe we put it over here. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Um, just to be safe, thorium reactor, and let's plop that right there. Perfect. And then we'll need to make sure we hook that up to our power supply, so it'll be hooked up to advanced electricity, and we'll just need to make sure we hook it up to regular electricity, and then we'll be good to go. Plenty of power to go around. Mr. Science is hanging out, doing doing something. Um, radish, uh, we'll have to hold off till we get some more bedrooms made, buddy but we do appreciate you stopping by. 
Mr. Science is hanging out there. Hi, Mr. Science. How you doing, friend? Um, cool. Cool, cool indeed. So I think this is another good place to end the episode while we finish researching the Squientist. That's going to take us quite a bit of time to get all the way up to 1,000. So thank you so much for coming out and watching this video. I do appreciate it. We uh, powered up the temple, and Mr. Science was turned into a squid, and we need to figure out why that happened, and hopefully we can save him. My, my guess is that these squids that have been hanging around our station for quite a few episodes are our ancestors, and they've been trying to communicate with us, but we've been too deaf to understand. Don't forget to like the video. Comment on down below, both on what you think that you know what you think about what's going on in the campaign so far, and on my video and audio quality and all that good stuff. And don't forget to subscribe to Tooth and Scrubs Gaming so you get this great content on time and in an orderly fashion. Thank you so much for stopping by, and we'll see you in the next Meeple Station video.